Imagine the following scene. You're sitting at your desk, cup of coffee to your left. You've got your keyboard on your lap. You're ready to take notes because you're about to watch your third webinar of the day. The meeting host gives a glowing introduction of the next speaker. That person takes over the meeting and says something like this. Hi, I'm Michael Davis. I'll be your presenter today. I don't know why I felt the need to tell you that because I was just introduced 10 seconds ago. You already know my name and why I'm here. But because everybody else does that, I'm going to give my name to you again. Let's dive into the presentation. Here's my picture. Not sure why it's here because you can see my face on the screen, but nevertheless, here it is. I think I've seen most other presenters do that. I'm probably going to tell you all about myself now because, well, that's also what everybody else does. Chances are pretty good that I will show more slides with lots and lots of print. And if you're really lucky, I'm going to share graphs, data, and PDFs with so much information that the print will get really small. That's okay, though, because I'm going to read it all to you. Come on, who doesn't want to be read to? And my presentation will continue like this with no interaction. You'll rarely see my face because I don't understand the importance of seeing the presenter's face in a virtual world. Nothing but me reading to you while I show you my slides for the next 45 minutes. But it will feel like 45 hours. All right, you get the point. Clearly, I'm being a smart aleck. But I'm being a smart aleck because I have experience so many presentations like this it makes me want to pull my hair out and at my age my hair is one thing i still like to have so please i'm begging everyone to stop giving presentations like this the slides are the biggest culprit before this video is over i'll show you how to properly structure your slides and go through them so you keep audience interaction you change the pace and keep interest but before that here are some key ideas to keep in mind when you put your slides together don't think like a presenter, think like an audience member. Ask yourself, does this slide appeal to me? Does this picture make sense to the point I'm trying to make? Do I have to read this and listen to the presenter too? Chances are pretty good, almost guaranteed that they're going to read the slide while you're reading it to them. They can't do both. They're going to always be drawn to the visual medium. They're not gonna to listen to you when they can read it themselves. Secondly, what kind of emotions will I stir if I present like this, if I show these slides? Am I going to intrigue people, interest them, or am I going to bore them, distract them, or even anger them? Maybe they've sat through so many of these in a day that they're just sick and tired and they're gonna get mad. You gotta think like an audience member if you want to create these presentations that people want to see. One of the most important and relevant ideas I ever picked up in my speech training was that audiences today do not want more information. They don't need it. If I need information, I can go to this little device right here and I can get it faster than you will ever be able to give it to me as a speaker. Now, what I want is your interpretation. If I'm sitting in front of you, chances are it's because I have a problem I want to solve. I know all about the problem. I probably know about the many solutions out there. I just haven't done anything with them. What I need is your perspective on how you solve this problem and make it relevant to me. How do you do that? Well, you can give some data and research, but most importantly, you can hear stories. Give us your story. Maybe throw some numbers in to back it up, but make the story the central part where you convey the idea so it makes sense to me. With all that said, how do you effectively put these slides together and present them? If you've watched these other tips, you know that there should be an image on the left, words, data, numbers should be on the right, and as few as possible. Forget those old rules of thumb that say six words per line on a slide and six lines at most, all those rules of thumb. Nope, it's gotta be as few words as possible. Here's a quick example from a webinar that I do with my friend Ray Engen. He is a humor expert. One of the topics or ideas we discuss is five keys to presenting a memorable a presentation online that keeps people engaged. So the first point we talk about is using a chat box. We put up this slide. We show the image of a chat box and one word. Then we come out of that slide, we click out of it, and then it's Ray and me, we're co-hosts, and you've heard all about that in a previous tip. We share ideas back and forth. 
we might ask people to contribute to the chat box while we're doing it. We want, we want that interaction right away. Then the fourth point is the breakout room. How do you use the breakout room? We show this quick image and we ask the question, would you rather look at an entire gallery of people, uh, virtual strangers probably, or go to a breakout room with a few people where you can get more comfortable to maybe ask some questions or discuss some challenges that people have. Again, we have them type into the chat box and we often will send them to a breakout room at that point so they can experience it. Then we go to our third point, which is all about polling. I'm a huge fan of polling because if you've seen my previous tip on this, it gives you great research on the spot. It helps you understand what your audiences need. So I will show quick examples of polls. Then we have our audience participate in polls. I want them to have that kinesthetic experience of typing in answers, giving their responses so they can experience it just as their audience will if they use them. The more you can have people experience the benefit of an activity, the more they're likely to use it. So we get them involved. Now notice on each of these slides, there's one highlight word, chat box, polling. That's all you need. If, if you're an expert in this area, you know what to talk about. So just use that as a visual cue. The audience will remember one word, they won't remember 50. Then we go to point number two, which is what we call spotlight coaching, one of our favorite activities. This is heavy audience involvement. We'll have individual members who will come on to the webinar as a co-host. We will give them feedback. We also encourage others to make comments in the chat box. That is optimum audience participation. And not only does it help the person being coached, it helps everybody watching. And then our last point that we make is co-host. It's so important to have a co-host when you're presenting because there's so much information and, and so many activities. You've heard this in a previous tip also that you just need a co-host. So we put a picture up here, not us dressed our best, but we're just making a point. The key here is that we're demonstrating the co-host. A little bit longer tip today, but I, this is my pet peeve when it comes to online presenting is people who put up slides and just read them they hide behind them we never see their faces if you want to stand out take all the tips you've learned to this point make it a smooth presentation where people are actually experiencing the back and forth with just reading one word and then when they see that word listening to your stories your perspective on the topic and you will have a much more memorable experience, which people will talk about and they'll want to see you again. And who knows how many doors that can open up for you. I look forward to talking with you in tip number 20.